Welcome to the Voice of Islam. The Voice of Islam is a weekly radio program organized by the Islamic Council of Jamaica, the umbrella organization for the Muslim community in Jamaica, to propagate the message of Islam, dispel the common misconceptions about Islam, and facilitate a medium to provide the Islamic perspective on topical issues and alternative solutions. You may contact the Islamic Council of Jamaica at 648 nine five four five that's six four eight nine five four five you are listening to the voice of islam before we begin let's take a few minutes to listen to the recitation of verses selected from the final revelation to mankind al-quran <laughs> يا ايها الذين امنوا توبوا الى الله توبه نصوحا عسى ربكم ان يكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويدخلكم جنات ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحت الأنهار يوم لا يخز الله النبي والذين آمنوا معه نورهم يسعى بين أيديهم وبأيمانهم يقولون يقولون ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا إنك على كل شيء قدير. I seek refuge in the name of Allah from the accursed devil. I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. O you who believe, repent to God with sincere repentance. Perhaps your Lord will remit your sins and admit you into gardens beneath which rivers flow. On that day, when God will not disappoint the Prophet and those who believe in, in him. You are listening to the voice, the voice of, of Islam. Islam. Inshallah, we will approach this, this as a series, inshallah. And the intention is that we want to do three parts. And um, we'll seek some feedback, inshallah, in terms of the closeness of these programs. So one of the first things, so there are several things, as we said. One of the first issue is that issue of God person saying i don't believe in god the child come and says look i don't see why god why do we need to believe in a creator as i said this will be more a discussion per se but inshallah before that i'd like sheikh yafa to speak on this issue of this why god issue what is this issue and how do we approach this issue with nila bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh so the 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 topic of um uh god or allah it's not it's not a new it's not a new one and um, people questioning uh does does god exist but we'll talk about what are some of the reasons for that uh in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah to yasin you know he created a human being and then he became an open opponent so you are created you have nothing and you grow up you get some strength and you be, your men, your mental faculty grows and all of a sudden you you are you are challenging the one who, who created you. It's like you sitting in front of your computer and you made the computer and the computer is not working anymore. It just freezes on you. And, uh, and, and human beings thinking that they have power. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues saying that, doesn't the human being see that we created him from, from, uh, from a, a, a clot and then he became an open enemy and then he made an example for Allah. He tries to argue. He said, who will bring back these broken and dusty bones when they have been on earth for very long? Some are burnt, some are buried, some die in sea. Who can bring them back together? How can God do that? But these are some of the questions today also that we are hearing, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
Now, doesn't you, you, you are talking about bringing you back from something that is broken. Remember when you are created from nothing. There was a time when nothing existed and you are created. Now you're wondering how you can be created from something that already exists. Which one is easier? The easier one is to bring you back, right? We know now in, in, in labs, in the hospitals, they can take a drop of blood and they culture it. They make it, you know, they, they make it grow. Right? And it's the same blood, it has the same DNA. So if human beings can do that to that extent, however small is that, however small that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you very unique, very unique. You can mix up with one billion people around the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring you out of them because every droplet of blood is different. Every fingerprint is, is different. Every um, um, the, the diametric uh, the measurement of your face is different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you uniquely and your blood is different. It has a DNA even if you're an identical twin. So just like you see these small examples in, in the labs that are created by us to differentiate two, two, two droplets of blood, those cells to differentiate them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can differentiate dust from human, from human particles, from human remains, and then take that human remains and actually bring them together and create, and create you again, yourself, and make you more powerful or make you less, give you stronger eyes or take your eyes from you. All of this is said in the Quran. So uh, this argument is old. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes again and says, isn't the one who created the heavens and the earth, which you cannot understand, isn't he able to create someone like you? If the heavens and the earth are bigger and stronger and more magnificent, and we're still trying to explore them, so it is easier to create someone like you. So this is an old argument, and alhamdulillah, uh, we are not, we are not uh, dropping the, our position to, to argue for it and explain it to people. And it can happen, this kind of uh, mis misleading ideas can occur to Muslims can occur to, to non-Muslims. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna mention a few things and I'm gonna let the flow inshallah go to someone else. The feeling of the existence of, of Allah, of God is a fitra, is in you. No matter what someone says, I, I believe that when people say there is no God, they are begging for explanation. They actually don't believe there is none. They are saying the explanation you gave me, I've, I've heard something else that has made me forget that. They're asking for explanation. That is one, because uh, anthropologists have, have done research and found that you can find societies in history that had no civilization, that, that, is, that is worth mentioning, but you cannot find society without a God. It just does not exist. They haven't found that yet. They will always find elements of worship because we as human beings, we are wired to worship. So the denying of God is begging for, for proper explanation so people can understand because we understand differently. Some are good with just their fitra, their innate nature. Others need um, to, to speak to their intellect. When they don't have that, they, they continue on that, on that path. So that is the first thing I wanted to, uh, to mention. You are listening to the voice of Islam. The second thing is, as a result of that, it's the social construct that may obscure that understanding. So somebody might grow up as a Muslim, but because of social media, because we're listening to people that are, that, that are more intellectually powerful than the ones that told us about Allah in the home. So we get swayed by those people through social media, through reading books, through many, many things. So which means also we have to also appeal to our environment. It's very important that we create the right environment to nurture that understanding and to keep it and to construct our own social understanding within our, our, our people. The third thing that makes people go astray is sinning. When there is too much sin, our people start wondering if there is God and why God is not punishing, why God is not bringing down the, the punishment. This happened before it is mentioned in the Quran so many places. Some tell the prophets, they said, it's, it's, you know, if what you are saying is true, we are doing this, this, these sins, tell God to punish us, they will believe you, right? Prophets have been asked this. So when they don't get the punishment, they turn to say, well, there is no God. <laughs> there is no God. You know, it's, it's rather a very silly way of arguing that when you think that if there, is a, if there is a law, then you should be in jail. But because you are not in jail, there is no law. It is, it is a funny logic, but it does happen. It does happen to, to people. And, and um, 
and when and when somebody sins to a point, their sin becomes uh, uh, their sin becomes uh, very ostentatious in front of them. It becomes beautiful to them. It becomes too beautiful, and they start to defend it. And it is very very difficult for somebody to conceive that after after doing so many sins, I have killed, I have lied, I have eaten people's wealth, I have destroyed people's reputation. I have, I, have, I have committed dictatorship against people. If I believe in God, it means I believe that I should be punished. So the best way for me to think that there is nothing that is going to happen to me, to happen to me is to deny the existence of God because that means I have to face justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in Surah Al-Jathiyah. He said, Am hasib al-ladhina jitara us-sayyi'at an naj'alahum kal-ladhina aman wa amilu salihat See, so the people who have committed so many sins want to be treated like the ones who believed and did good deeds, right? Now, because they have been in so many sins, they think they cannot be forgiven. The only way to feel that, okay, it's okay, is to deny there is no God. It's to, it's to deny the existence of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, that's a bad judgment. Man. Because you have sinned, so you think there is no God, that's a bad judgment. And just a few ayahs after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Have you seen the one that has taken their God as their desire or the desire as their God? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had let them go astray, even though they have some knowledge. Usually it's people who have some knowledge that go this path. They are involved in so much sins, they deny that, they, they, they deny the existence of God. And they are harder to bring back, back because Allah says, وَخَتَمَ عَلَى سَمْعِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closed their ears وَقَلْبِ and their heart فَجَعَلَ عَلَى بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوَ and covered their face with a covering فَمَنْ يَهَدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ Who can guide them except Allah? Those people need dua for, for them to be guided. So I just wanted to, to throw these things out there so it's to remind people also of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving regardless of what you do. He is up to forgiving. So inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and guide us. Jazakumullah khair. Um, Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair, ya Sheikh. So the floor is open. Whether one wants to raise their hand or type, if this issue is affecting them or persons they know or further advice they have. Brother Tariq, I have a comment. <clears throat> I was wondering what advice can we give to, for example, a university student who's studying physicist physics and um he or she is having doubt about Allah should that student um stop their secular um knowledge or how should they move forward mashallah that's a that's that's a, a very good question alhamdulillah um when persons have these queries and concern no it is not it is it is not recommended to tell them to stop but to get them in an environment, not necessarily, and, and I, I, I like the question. So it's not necessarily getting in them in a physical environment. I mean, they have to go away to study, stop this, go away to study Islam, and then come back. So that may not be the necessity. Only in extreme cases, that might be the situation. But typically, it is best to get them in a setting. So even though they are studying in a setting, whether it be an Islamic setting or in a setting with just you, so someone who can give them good advice. And this is why we said stimulating the thought. So somebody else you know who is in the field. So yes, many times we refer just to the scholars. But there may be another Muslim who is a doctor, who is very sound on knowing who Allah is. And through his studies in medicine, it has affirmed him as a Muslim. So I, I really appreciate that in terms of stimulating the discussion. But it is not necessary to tell them to stop studying what you're studying. Learn about Allah first. This can be done simultaneously. I hope Allahu Alam. I hope that response is helpful to yourself and whoever might be listening, inshallah. You are listening to the voice of Islam. All right. So as I said, the floor is open. And I will get into the other topics. So I'll mention them, but it doesn't mean that we have left this one. But just to keep the, the, the discussions open, because alhamdulillah, when we speak about these topics, many times it is shown away. So the whole aspect of this LGBTQ plus community and persons considering themselves that you are you have binary thinking, but I don't limit my thought to binary thought. And this is why I am non-binary. When we listen to these concepts, many times nobody wants to be told that their thought process is limited. 
And it is funny when persons will say it is because you have a limited view. You have a binary thought, but my view is not that limited. It is much more liberal where I'm non-binary. And what is this? What basically is this? Just to give a basic idea of all of these issues, the whole aspect of binary and non-binary. Non-binary are those persons who believe, and many times it is amongst those who consider themselves transgenders, but it is not limited to that group. There are those who consider themselves neither male nor female or both. This is at the basic, basic definition. So they consider themselves neither male nor female or both. So you will find a breakdown definition, for example, for non-binary. You'll hear other words. And it's important for us to know because if our children come to us or another adult come to us, how do we respond to this? How do we approach this? The other words they use for non-binary, for example, one of them is where they call it agender. So this is where, of course, you don't necessarily associate to any specific one. There's the one that they call bigender, which means that they belong to both. There's another where they call flu gender fluid. So it flows. You're male today, female tomorrow. And the third one is gender queer, where you make that decision. So these are some of the terminologies that we must be familiar with. We have to understand because our children are seeing this. It is in the media, all the thing in the discussions, the things that they are watching, the things we are watching, when they're whatever it's trending. And these are also some things we look at later in our session in terms of trending, being influencers, etc. But this one is that one is not particularly for today. But it is important for us to understand what is happening in our society. So this is the whole aspect of the non-binary concept for those who are not. Because when I sent out the poster, subhanAllah, persons asked me, what is binary, non-binary? And these are senior individuals. So they were lost to what's happening. And alhamdulillah, I mean, once they are not exposed, but then if their children are exposed, they don't know how to respond. They really will not know how to respond. And this is why we really want to address that. The aspect of LGBTQ. This subhanAllah, if someone comes, and this is the general thing as we know in our society right now. If one of our ch children, a child of ours, come to us and say, daddy or mommy, I'm gay or I'm lesbian. What do we think is the general response to this? Being honest with ourselves, beyond the astaghfirullah, because we know the astaghfirullah, that automatic response. Beyond the astaghfirullah. O over my dead body. Ah, mashallah. There you go. Alhamdulillah. That is it. Another, anybody else? What, what is it? Think of your child, those of us who are on the program. Your child come to you. Let's be honest now. We're going to keep the floor clear, inshallah. Your child come to you today and say to you, and if your child is listening, I would like your child to test you right now and just say to you right now as if they're not listening. And see what your response is. In Jamaica, I tell them I say you're mad. <laughs> right, right, subhanallah. So here in Jamaica, they'll say you're mad. All right, subhanallah. And another sister said that the parents will say, Where did I go wrong? The parents will start asking themselves, Where did where did I go wrong? What did I do wrong? No, subhanallah. Subhanallah. Anybody else want to give a comment? What is the response? Or what do we think is the, 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 the response to this, inshallah? May I, 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 I totally agree with what you mentioned earlier other than the Sheikh. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa all. But I think it has to do with um, we really need to have an open mind and a reasonable. We have to be ready to be to, to talk. No. To, really, to listen to our own children, to our peers, even our relatives. We have to listen to them. And, and no. for us, I think you mentioned, I don't know if it's this forum or term before I was listening, um, alhamdulillah. It's one of the, one of the blessings from Allah. We have two ears and one mouth. No. You know, people don't want to listen. They don't want to accept that these things are reality and they're happening and they may affect us. And how we deal with them, we have to first listen and then investigate and then try to, you know, advise, no. sincere advice from our level. And if it's definitely a case where <laughs> our level is not working, then we recommend to those professionals and ulamas and Mashallah. And so forth, inshallah. But I think we really need to care. Because just to quickly, I've had experience with situations like this, where gays, Muslim men took shahad and Muslims wouldn't accept them. And they reverted back. Because mm. the Muslim community would not just accept these individuals. Mashallah. After they come to deen, take shahada. And these are situations. But Alhamdulillah. You are listening to the voice of Islam.
نعم جزاك الله خير الحمد لله and I like how and الحمد لله the discussion has started so inshallah this is one of the things for example and and we have had this I've heard this situation before where a person accept Islam yes because they may be gay or lesbian they accept Islam and then the Muslim community avoids them but I'd like to put it this way as I said I'm stimulating this question because if we find that there is this brother and he's married and he committed adultery will we ostracize him or can he still come to the masjid um if if we if we heard that this person this individual committed murder and then they accepted islam the day after or on the day so they killed someone they re re regretted and they accepted islam is it that we believe that there is no hope for this individual or this person why i'm saying this subhanallah and i think many of us might see what is occurring here is that when it comes to sin when it comes to whether it be fornication adultery stealing lying backbiting and sodomy when it comes to these acts when it comes to these acts whether one so yes and an act where a man becomes infatuated with another man or a woman with another woman or one a man with both men and women when it comes to this many of us we see that these people are condemned to hell let's be honest many times in our minds we are not receptive and open to listen because that sin seems like a sin that's automatically hell so this is what many people what we will find is that automatically hell we believe that these people you know what there's no hope so you accepted islam there is no hope and another thing that we find as well if somebody is an alcoholic um when they accept islam we we are what should we say we are receptive and understand that it may take them a time to come off it because we know alcohol anonymous we know that they they are trying to come off they are taking ease but when it comes to this sin whichever other sin it is this man is going around committing fornication he accept islam he has a child out of wedlock still accept him another child out of wedlock with another child another child another child and it continues throughout his life the next 20 years he's committing zina but he's well accepted but for an individual who is committing an act this act if this person subhanallah if this person commits this act then as far as we are concerned they cannot be muslim there's no dawa to these people we don't say it outright but this is what is happening many times so do you find muslims going so you see two men seem like they're having the a conversation or a discussion do we really think that we will speak to that individual when we hear and persons tell us that you know this man he is gay he's homosexual or this woman she's a lesbian do we approach them and try to bring the message of islam to these people it is very important for us to reflect when we start judging and the only judge that is supposed to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something that he forgives all sins all sins except shirk if you don't repent so subhanallah what does this mean for muslims think about it even if someone commits acts these acts of homosexuality it is upon allah to decide if he will forgive that sin allah says the only sin that he tell you that he will not forgive unless you repent is shirk the only sin so many of us and we find muslims openly committing adultery openly committing fornication and then condemning the one who has these inclinations and these desires i have seven points inshallah as to how do we address it but before that i would like again if there's anybody else having any comments then um or our concerns and i like that and so on. so i see dr Subhanak, alhamdulillah he's going to speak assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh wa alaikum assalam uh, wa rahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, for speaking about this topic i really like the way you address it mentioning that people may have inclination so i think we as a muslim community i know someone asked in the comment section that if someone openly actually uh declare that they are this so do we accept them so what people do behind closed door is really none of our business. That's one way I want to address this, number one. And also, inclination is different from the act, right? People can have different kind of inclination, right? Oh, I have this kind of inclination, but this person really act upon it. 
right? Um, we sometimes we kind of openly condemn people based on their inclination. Like, hey, you know what? I have this inclination towards same gender, right? I believe t- talking to that person and addressing whatever inclination that person have, why do you have such inclination will go such a long way compared to us just uh, 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 openly condemning them on the spot. Yes, we as a Muslim, we do not condone stuff like this, right? It is something that we do not accept, but also, uh, you know, we do that with wisdom, right? There's always wisdom in the way we address uh, uh, issue like this. So that's just the comment I, I want to add. So the inclination is different from the act. And I think whenever we are addressing situation like this, we should put that in the back of our mind. Tune in next week for the continuation of the LGBTQ discussion and much more. Thank you all for listening to The Voice of Islam, a weekly radio program organized by the Islamic Council of Jamaica to propagate the message of Islam, dispel the common misconceptions about Islam, and facilitate a medium to provide Islamic perspective on topical issues and alternative solutions. Remember. You may collect a free Quran, yes, a free Quran by emailing us, sending a text message, or visiting any of our locations. Please send in your questions and comments to islamradiojm at gmail.com. That's islamradiojm at gmail.com. Or by text message to 892-1350. That's 892 892- one three five zero. You may also visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Islamic Council of Jamaica, or find us on Instagram at ICOJ underscore official, or you may listen to a past episode on our YouTube channel, Islamic Council of Jamaica. You may also visit any of the following locations. Islamic Council of Jamaica, 24 Camp Road, Kingston 4. Masjidul Aziz, Portmore Central Plaza, West Tradeway, Portmore. Masjidur Rahman, Windsor Road, Spanish Town. Islamic Dawa Center, 1 Makati Street, Montego Bay. Masjid Al Hakim, 138 Main Street, Ochrios. Masjid Al Sabr, Albany, St. Mary. Masjid Hussein, 3 Miles River, West Milan. Masjid Al Haq, New Green Road, Mandeville. Masjid Al Noor, Port Maria, St. Mary. Masjid Al Ihsan, West End Road, Negril. Masjid al Taqwa, Newell, St. Elizabeth. Masjid Ibrahim, Riversdale, St. Catherine. Masjid al Sakina, 26 Miriam Way, Montego Bay. Peace be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum. Oh.